listening to the Jumper Cable Records podcast. Thanks for tuning in. We're here with singer-songwriter Erin O'Dowd. She is making waves through Nashville for the Americana Fest um, that just ended, but she's here via Tulsa, Oklahoma. Erin, thank you so much. We're honored to have you here with us tonight. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. So I'm just, there's so much that I'm excited to hear about, everything that you're working on. So I just kind of want to get get into it. What do you think about starting with some rapid fire questions? Let's do it. Awesome. <laughs> Put me on the spot. Yes. Everybody loves that. <laughs> a minute ago, I mentioned that uh, you're from the Tulsa area. Um, can you tell those of us who are planning to spend some time there or pass through there even for just a day mm. what in your opinion is the best spot for savory grub oh oh and savory. the best spot for sweet oh man or, this is almost hard for me because I moved away for a few years and I've oh. been back during the pandemic and I've I've just started going out to eat um yeah. dessert well I just went to a place um that had like macarons bubble tea yes. And ice cream. And yes. I thought it was like the best thing ever. And I think it's called, see, now I don't even know the name, but I know it's owned by the Pink Itzel. Oh, um, cool. So it's not Pink Itzel, but it's right next to it on Cherry Street in Tulsa. And oh, cool. yeah, it was awesome. They have like Marie Antoinette everywhere. And also, yes, Antoinette's Bakery um, in downtown Tulsa on Main Street is, that's the best. I just haven't Ooh. been since before I moved. So I was like spacing on it, but they have like gluten-free options, which I am gluten-free. Um, I have celiac, so not by choice, but, um, right. you know, sometimes I don't like to tell people that, but, uh, you know, that's the best spot for, for sweets. Now savory, I love Yokozuna. It's, um, an Asian fusion restaurant that has sushi. They have everything. They do a little bit of everything yeah. and I absolutely love their food. It is so good. And I love sushi. So, um, if that can count as savory, I'm going to say, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I think so. So both these places sound very versatile. Like they uh -huh. have lots of options. Do you go and like order one of everything or do you mm. make it like, do you plan like this time I will get one thing next time I will get. Yeah. I usually get like really strong, <laughs> random cravings, you know, and it's just uh, like, I have to have this thing. And so usually I'll go because I'm like, I need a Macron. I love those. Yes. They are gluten-free and they're just, they're like the little French cookies that you bite into and they should melt in your mouth. They should. Yeah, I hate it when they've been should. refrigerated. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's terrible. It's like, what is this thing? I mean, it's still okay. It's sweet. You know, we all like sugar, but you have to yeah. have them fresh. Yeah, absolutely. And Antoinette's, I have to say, has the freshest ones in, in town. And also, it's right down the street from the Canes Ballroom, which is a historic venue. Um, there's a awesome pizza place, Empire Slice. Really good, gluten-free. They have vegan. Wow. They have everything. So we've got to go. Yeah. We've got to go to Tulsa. we got to make it out there. Yeah, it's it'll be fun. <laughs> that sounds fun. Let's finish with some... Which one do you prefer? Nostalgic mm -hmm. edition. Mm. Really quickly. Let's see. NSYNC or Backstreet Boys? Um, this is hard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that Backstreet Boys was my original favorite. Yeah. And I say that with like this little, because uh, I was a 90s grunge fan. I was listening to gotcha. like Nirvana and Cranberries. But mm -hmm. then yeah. my friends were really into NSYNC and Backstreet Boys. So I hit about age like, 10, 11, and then I had like a secret crush on all the Backstreet Boys, mm -hmm. and I would like cry in my room, and I was like, this is what love is, and <laughs> now that I'm 34, I'm like, oh my gosh, that music like ruined my expectations, <laughs> you know, of what to expect, and that is not the kind of love I want, trust me, like none of those songs are, you know, the great Swedish songwriters, you know, not dissing the songwriting, I, I love the songs, but yeah, very melodramatic, very <laughs> like not healthy relationship standards. True. So based on that, I might say in sync because I yeah. feel like in sync was more lighthearted and just kind of silly. Honestly, I think all those feelings though, Erin, were a rite of passage. So you're right. I think you're don't right. Don't be too hard on yourself. <laughs> Puberty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I will. I will just um, ex nay on. The, the, I was going to say Britney Spears or Christina, just to be oh. nostalgic. Britney or Christina? Christina was my favorite yeah. initially. And I was kind of like smug about Britney. But then like the older I got, the more I liked Britney. It was like, it was uncool to like Britney for a while, at least yeah, in my true. friend group. I don't know why. And now, now I'm like looking back, I'm like, Britney was like it. amazing. And she's still doing it and more power to her. She got free. Yeah. 
Yeah. Love that. She's a show woman. Yeah, through she through. is. <laughs> okay, last one is Beatles or Rolling Stones. Oh, these are really cool. Oh my gosh. You got, this is, uh <laughs> Warming up. No. Beatles, Rolling Stones. Okay. I keep doing this, but Beatles, I, I loved the Beatles. Like I discovered them around like age 13 and mm-hmm. I listened to them only the Beatles for like two years. So original favorite, definitely the Beatles. I really like the Stones though. And like the Americana seventies rock songwriter in me is like yes. the Stones. Like you can't, you know, you can't get away from the Stones. Like I, if I don't know what to play and I'm like sitting down at a piano, I'll play like, you know, a Stones song. Like I'll play Dead Flowers, you know, I'll go into their Wild Horses version and um, their version of that. And I'm like, I really love it. That's so cool. It's really hard to imagine music now without either of those bands. So, mm-hmm. um, Excellent job. (laughs) So just to let our listeners know, we found you through the music community here in Nashville. Um, People always hear about the music scene out here. It's, you know, it's very famous. They hear about the energy, um, what all that encompasses. Um, But like I said before, you have true, like established roots in Tulsa, Mm -hmm. which the general public doesn't really hear as much about. Mm -hmm. Um, So let's talk about that. What is the music community like there? And is there something um, that you admire specifically about it? Yeah, absolutely. I would say, I mean, it's a lot smaller than Nashville. For, yeah. So first of all, I think that limits the experience a bit. And it is really hard to compare the two. I feel like it's comparing apples to oranges, mm-hmm. you know? Because, I mean, Tulsa definitely wants to be known as a music city. And it has a super rich musical history. And anybody that is, like, super into music knows that. So I think Tulsa has that kind of special niche place on the map um but it doesn't really have a music business so the music scene is great and you've got some really amazing artists that are playing and then lately too i think since the pandemic a lot of people are moving there um it's just cheaper to live there so i found that being back i've noticed a lot of new artists and a lot of new writers rounds happening and new showcases and i'm like that's awesome for tulsa because when i was kind of up and coming it was there was kind of like one scene Mm -hmm. for that kind of music and i felt like other than those fans people didn't really appreciate singer songwriters it was like we want party bands we want loud bands right and tulsa's I, there is a university there. I wouldn't really say it's a college town, but I would say <laughs> what the majority of people appreciate in Tulsa is like you would think of as being a college town kind of music. Gotcha. Um, but but thankfully that's expanding and um, there's an incredibly loyal, supportive fan base there that, you know, feels like family and it kind of feels like, you know, it's my hometown and it'll always be my hometown. Um, I just want to manifest with you for a minute. If you had like the Aaron O'Dowd worldwide headline tour. Oh. First things first is who would you want to open for you? Oh gosh, I knew that was coming and yeah. I was scrambling what mentally like, oh my gosh. For you? Well, I'm not there yet. So I feel like it's going to be more awesome than anybody I could think of right now. Cause I'm like, I, I could think of who I'd want to open for. I'm like, okay, Casey Musgraves. Yes. Yeah. Check. Check. <laughs> um, <laughs> opening for me, it's like, oh gosh, you know, I could pick someone, they could surpass me. They could get there, you know, faster than me. I'm like, I don't even know. But that's what's so cool about it. <laughs> Honestly, I love both of the songwriters that I played with last night I did a round at the Yazoo Tap Room in Madison for um, you know, a lot of words here Americana Fest week yep. unofficial showcase put on by <laughs> Magnolia Rhodes she does great showcases every year at Americana Fest and just throughout the year in Nashville she's from Vegas actually Emily Hansen so shout out to her and Charisse from Desert Valley House concerts put on amazing yes. music and all of the artists I absolutely love so honestly I'd pick any of those artists to open for me but I'd open for them too um, in the round with me was Afton Wolf. He's local and Mayman, which looks like Mayhuman. So yes. I, I am going to say that just for anyone that, you know, sees her name out there. She's recently moved to Nashville, I believe, or at least in the last few years. And, um, wow. Yeah. We just had a lot of fun. We all accompanied each other with harmonies and yes. percussion and some lead guitar. And I just felt like that was really, really awesome mashup. And I would love to, collaborate like that again I probably should have asked this first but I want to know what would be on your green room writer for this worldwide headlining tour okay well (laughs) Prince first of all my dog is gonna be there so you know nobody you know can say anything about that he's he is literally the life of the party always and (laughs) um I don't I might put like you know we need like a mini dog park out back for him we might need some dogs to come in I know a lot of artists like to bring in puppies Casey Musgraves I saw did that and I was like 
I was thinking, I think maybe she probably didn't have a dog at the time, but I was like, I want some dogs that my dog can play with. So he's not oh, bored. Yeah. Um, food. I want sushi <laughs> as many times as I can without, Always. you know, overeating the mercury and the fish, you know, right. we're going to be careful about that, Otherwise, but we're going to have sushi. We're going to have sushi. Thai food. We're going to have gluten-free fried chicken and biscuits which I mm. ate today and yesterday. And I love Joyland here in town. That was insane. Ooh. That was the best gluten-free fried chicken I've ever had. And you can also get regular. You guys should check that it out. That sounds amazing. Um, yeah, I want, maybe I just want their chicken and biscuits like at every show. I don't know how <laughs> I'm going to make that happen. That's a ridiculous ask, but you know. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> I need my biscuits and my chicken, okay? <laughs> Highly important to me. <laughs> I like that writer. Well, so I know you are, you have your next album in the works. Yes. You're writing, you're planning. Um, to anyone listening, just like hold your horses. She's in the planning yeah. <laughs> stage of everything. Um, but your debut album, Old Town, was, mm -hmm. it was so deep and incredibly meaningful. Um, and that just seems to be your music and your voice through and through. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that you know, with albums, you're going through phases with, Absolutely. with your writing. Yes. So are there ways that you are approaching this record um, that are different from the last one? Maybe your creative process, your inspiration, or like maybe you just feel like an entirely different person this time. I feel like an entirely different person. Yeah. Um, you know, and like change is the only constant, right? So I've, I feel like I've been in a state of evolution for a long time that I've kind of more recently I'm stepping into as I went through like a huge health illness thing. And like, I feel like stepping out of that, it's like everything's lining up for me where it's like, Oh, you know, the silver lining was all that time to sit there and think and plan ahead, yeah. even though I didn't know when I was going to be able to execute any of it, but I was writing songs the whole time. Um, even though I was too sick to like play instruments, I was still like voice memos, lyrics. So I just wow. have so much material that's kind of back backed up, you know, but it's important to remember it's not really, it's kind of music is timeless. So it's not, there's not a rush. And I, you know, I've only talked to like two people that were like, those songs are going to be stale. And I'm like, you are stale, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm like, I disagree. <laughs> Leonard Cohen took like 20 years to write yes. like a hallelujah, I think. Yes, and, and, and quite a few of his other songs. And he's one of my favorite writers and huge influence. And I'm like, yeah, you know, songs are a craft you know, Bob Dylan approached songwriting that way too. And that's like, he's one of my biggest writing inspirations too. And yeah, like there's so many songs I've written probably hundreds of songs, not to like brag or anything. I just write a lot. And then, you know, albums are always like, it takes so long to put a record out that usually I think most artists, the songs that end up, you know, say I released an album tomorrow, I would have written like three years ago, potentially. Mm -hmm. And everyone has a different process. But for me, I think the next album is going to be more of like emotional catharsis, maybe more empowering than I feel like old town was really cathartic emotionally. It was very like descriptive of what, of what was happening for me in that time in my twenties. Yeah. And some of the songs on there I wrote when I was like 18 years old. So, you know, it's, I still play songs that are very old and the songs that are new are just, I'm still working them up because I've, I've just come back to playing since said, um, the apocalypse. Um, <laughs> and, um, and so I just haven't really worked up the, the other songs for live. It, it really was something I actually planned to do. I was like, I'm never playing those songs again. I'm so tired of that set. You know, I was so busy that with the old town tour that like, I just couldn't write, like I couldn't finish writing or put anything new. And that was frustrating for a while. It was, it's always good to be busy, but, um, I didn't really have a team once the, the album cycle was over. So I was just so busy. Mm -hmm. And, um, so one of the silver linings too, of having time off is like, okay, I have time to like really hash out these songs and mm -hmm. meditate and just like sit there and breathe into what feels right. And, um, yeah, so that's been really, really exciting to have the time to, to do that. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to doing the new songs. And I've got, I've got shows planned in the next few months for the fall that I'm definitely going to debut some new songs oh at. Gosh, so very cool. super excited. So song, yeah. Songs, they aren't an event. They're a process. Yeah. She's putting everything through the refiner's fire right now. Exactly. Um, but we're so excited to hear everything that comes out. Thank you. Miss O'Dowd. Yes. Uh, we have listeners who are aspiring musicians 
um, listeners who are trying to navigate the music industry, navigate imposter syndrome, anxiety. <laughs> know that well. Do you know it? <laughs> Don't we check, all? Check, check. Criticism, <laughs> all those things. Um, is there any piece of life advice that you can part with the world, with our people today? Yeah, and this one's really going to be personal to me, something that I've really had to imprint upon my soul is don't worry about it being perfect because perfect is not possible. And you can really hold yourself back by, you know, that self-criticism. And we all do it. Everybody does it. Even some of the biggest artists out there, you know, I love listening to other artists' interviews as an artist that maybe I'm not like super green, but I mean, maybe I have some things under my belt, but like it, it really helps me through to see that some of the master level artists are like, yeah, I have anxiety and imposter syndrome. And I'm like, huh? So this is just a normal human experience. So don't yes. beat yourself up. Don't be too hard on yourself for having those feelings of anxiety because the, the truth is that's excitement too. You know, when you have that build for a show and then you get up there, it's like a release and it's, it actually helps you feel really good. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and the more you do anything, you'll get more confident with it. So I would say, keep trying. You know, I talk, I talk to a lot of people that are like, I can't sing or I can't do this. And you're, and they'll say, well, you're just naturally talented. I'm like, you don't see how many hours that I've put into this. Like everything takes effort. Like I think that anyone can do anything if they really want it, if they really put in that time. But, you know, um, and that was probably more than one advice, but it was all kind of one thing. So no, it's great. <laughs> just it's real because yeah. a lot of people just like you said, they say, oh, you're just it comes naturally to you. Holy cow. Like yeah. if they could see like the agony sometimes. Exactly. The hours exactly. That you put into it's, your craft. So yeah. that's, that's super important to hear um, over and over again. So let's wrap up with some shout outs. Is there anyone we want to say hi to today? Oh, oh man, I should have prepared for this. Oh. <laughs> I'm a little bit, you Hello, know, everybody. just scatterbrained after the Americana Fest was so great. Oh, I'm going to give a shout out that. to Lee, who is a writer, and we met at the Westin Hotel, and it was just a random meeting, but he's so nice, and he's like, yeah, you know, I want to put you in this magazine, and like, and then he introduced me to um, a local songwriter named Joey. He's a guitar player. I don't even know his last name yet. That's how new we are. But he came out to the show last night and he's like, yeah, wow. if you ever need a guitar player. And I'm like, that's so cool how, you know, someone I just met like 45 minutes later was like, hey, meet this person. This is my friend, Aaron. And it's like the spirit of Americana Fest is just so real and like so perfect to me. Like it seriously is my favorite week of the year. So on that note, I'm also going to shout out the Americana Fest people, um, Dana Strong. I don't remember all of their names. I, I'm bad sometimes with that. All of you. You know, the recall. <laughs> but they are just they just do such a great job. And, like, every year, I swear, it gets better. And I just meet so many amazing people. And it so many things happen for my career. And, like, and, and you know, music is a lifestyle. So, you know, yeah. when your job is your art, but it's also, like, a job. You know, it's really interesting because we, we really do put in so much of ourselves to our art and, and our career. And, um, you know, that's also our fun <laughs> so, right. you know, I just love that. I love Nashville. I love what Nashville has to offer and how many like-minded, like-spirited people there are. So, you know, you like you guys, shout outs Aww. to Jumper Cable Records. <laughs> so this is also really amazing to just how we randomly met, you know. Yes. Well, we feel really honored. I truly. love it. Yeah. This is awesome. How can our listeners connect with you? I am on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, not yet on Patreon, but might be soon. So, um, uh, Check, look out yeah. for that. Spotify, YouTube. Yes. You know, everywhere. Um, Aaron O'Dowd. My name is kind of rare, so it's pretty easy to find me, thankfully. If you do like a Google search, you can just <laughs> like find it all. True, Please huh? like, subscribe, follow. Yes. And that way, too, you'll know about shows and the new music that's coming out soon. So. Heck yeah. All right. Thank you for listening. Aaron, thanks again for yeah, being thank here. Thank you for having We're me. Gonna your eyes were faded, a robin's egg blue, and all without love could I look I went away for a while on a summer noon, but I never did lose sight of you.
chase